Welcome to Rightly Dividing with Pastor Rob. This is a series of biblical videos that we're putting out, biblical lectures, and they're brought to you by the Burnable Baptist Church of Burnable, Oklahoma, for the purpose of making clear and contextual Bible studies available to everyone. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe to our channel and share them with your friends. God bless and get ready to explore God's Word together. Okay, welcome back to our channel. This is going to be our fourth video in our series on Jonah. All of the previous videos are available on our channel in the story of Jonah, uh, as well as being one of the most known in the Bible, is also one of the most interesting. Even though the story is well known, there are many aspects of Jonah that are overlooked. In this series, we endeavor to dig deep into Jonah's life and ministry, so sit back and enjoy the video. This is entitled, Jonah and the Mariners. Okay, so in this episode, I want to look specifically at the relationship between Jonah and the Mariners, the sailors, the ones that were tasked with taking him to his destination of Tarshish. And so, as we learned in the last video, the ships of Tarshish were a very important part of the world at that time. They were a, a strong force. They were the ones who brought the wealth of the world into that area of the ancient Near East. All of the uh, empires that rose and fell during that time always sought to have business done with these ships of Tarshish. So because of that, these mariners would have been experienced. These were sailors. This is what they did for a living. They plied between the Near East and clear over to the very western edge of the Mediterranean Sea. They were used to, to sailing the Mediterranean Sea in all kinds of weather and different uh, circumstances. They were not at all novices in their craft. And so the relationship that we're going to see here between Jonah and the mariners is really what I want to focus on today. I want to look at it. I think it's really important and telling. And what I want you to look for today and what we're going to try to bring out is the, a story of repentance, a story of faith, and we're going to see changes in both the attitude of Jonah towards God and towards his service for God, and also we're going to see a very clear and important change in the attitude of the mariners towards Jehovah God, towards the God of the Israelites. And so let's begin. We're going to begin today. We're going to read uh, this, this whole section. So bear with me. We're going to read these verses. We're going to begin in verse 4 of chapter 1, and we're going to read through verse 16. Okay, so if you have your Bibles handy, open them up. You can take notes. If not, I'm going to have all the scripture references. We will be looking at a few other scriptures in the course of this video, and I will provide uh, in the description of the video all of our scripture references. So let's begin. So Jonah chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thy occupation? From whence comest thou? What is thy country? And what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. 
And they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah, and they cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the, mere, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. So the first thing that we see here in this scripture, in this passage, in verse number four, we know that Jonah has embarked, he has gotten on this boat, he's paid the fare, he is, he is on his way to Tarshish. He is single-handedly taking it upon himself. He is going to save the nation of Israel. He is going to fulfill the prophecies of Isaiah concerning Tarshish. He is going there. He is on the ship. And what we see, the first thing that, Noah, that Jonah does is he, he goes to sleep. But it says here that God had other plans. And this is the first of two things we're going to see that God had prepared for Jonah in this uh, section. It says here that the Lord sent. And I, I was thinking about that phrase, the Lord sent. And let's look at the verse here. Verse 4, it says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. So God here is showing his power. The Lord sees Jonah. Jonah is fleeing, presumably from the presence of the Lord, but boy, it's not so easy to get away from the presence of, of God. God had a specific job for, do, for Jonah. Jonah was God's man. Jonah was God's prophet. Jonah was committed. Jonah was surrendered to doing the will and the work of God, to speaking the words of God, where God had sent him. And now Jonah was in the middle of his disobedience. He felt for a good reason. You know, so many times I think that we uh, try to decide when and where and how we are going to serve God. But that's not really the way it works. And we see that as Jonah begins on this journey, that God immediately begins to reel him back. Immediately. It says the Lord sent out a, a great wind. And this great wind, it says the ship was nearly broken. And these ships weren't broken easily. These were ships that were designed to traverse the Mediterranean Sea. These were ships that were designed to withstand the waves and the wind. But we see here what happens with the Mediterraneans. It says the mariners were afraid. And it tells us they began to cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. And I want you to notice one particular phrase, and we're going to come back to this phrase here in a little bit, and it's kind of the beginning, the first reaction of the mariners. And it says, they cried every man unto his God. Do you see it there? It says here, they cried every man unto his God. So we see her represented on this ship as they were uh, sailors from these isles. Uh, they had different gods that they worshipped. They had, came from different places. They had the gods of their ancestors. And they began to cry out to their gods and they began to lighten the ship. In other words, they began to do the things that they knew how to do. They knew how to uh, handle the ship in rough weather. And they began, but in this it says they were afraid. They were afraid. This was something different. This came out of nowhere. They weren't expecting this storm. If you have your Bibles there, go with me over. We're going to go into the book of Psalms. I'll have the verses up here for you. In Psalms 107, verses 23, 23 through verse 30, uh, the, the psalmist here writing tells us this. It says, They that go down to the sea 
in ships, that do business in great waters. These, the ones that go down to sea, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises up the stormy sea, which lifts up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven, the waves, the waves mount up to heaven and they go down again to the depths. And it says their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Then they are glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. They bringeth them unto their desired haven. You know, thinking about being on a, a ship out at sea and completely in control of the elements. Uh, today, occasionally, people will attempt to sail across the ocean in a, in a small sailboat, you know, but they still take GPS and they have an emergency motor and they carry gasoline just in case something happens. But you get out into the middle of the sea, you get out into the middle of the ocean and, and not everything goes according to your plan. But it tells us here that these, that these sailors, their first reaction was to cry out to their gods. And it says here that they know the power of the deep. They understand the, the, the difficulty they're in. But Jonah? It, the Bible gives us something very interesting about Jonah. The Bible says that he was sleeping through the storm. See, the mariners, they weren't asleep. <laughs> they understood they're in this situation. And the, the, the psalmist writes how that it, they, when they were in the midst of these storms, you know, sometimes we are overcome with storms in our life. We are overcome with things that, we, that, that there's nothing we can, can do to control them. The waves are out of our control. The wind is out of our control. The, the height of the waves, the depth of the ocean, none of these things can we control. And sometimes it seems in our life we're just tossed about to and fro on the this. But it, it tells them that when they cry out unto the Lord, and then it gives this phrase, it says that he brings them to their desired haven. So here we see these mariners crying out to God. They're running to and fro. They're throwing things overboard to lighten the ship so that it will float higher in the water so that maybe the waves won't overcome it and sink them. But it tells us something interesting here about Jonah. It says Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and lay and was fast asleep. I was thinking about this. How could Jonah sleep through this storm. And then I was thinking and applying it to myself. I think that sometimes as Christians, as those of us who profess to know God, to believe in God, to follow after him, to be his servants, I think sometimes we sleep through the storms. See, Jonah here, he felt like he was doing God's work even though he knew he was disobeying God. And maybe Jonah didn't really believe at this point that God would, would stop him. It tells us that he had gone down into the ship. And, you know, um, the calmest place on a ship in the midst of a storm is down deep inside of it. Boy, up on the deck, the, the wind is blowing and it blows you around and the waves are coming over you and the sailors are running around throwing things overboard and the they're drawing in the, the, the sails and the ropes are flying around and boy, on the deck of the ship will be chaos. But then down in the bottom of the ship, there at least it gives you the illusion of calm. In the bottom of the ship, there's no wind. In the bottom of the ships, the waves weren't coming over. Maybe you're being rocked about to and fro, but there was Jonah under the illusion that everything was all right and that everything was going on, going okay, sleeping through that storm. Sometimes maybe we hide away from the problems that are in our life where we don't feel the wind when the waves aren't overtaking us and we just 
withdraw and hide and pretend that everything is calm around us. And that's the position we find Joan in. But you know what? That can't last. As children of God, when God has given us a service to do, when he's trying to get our attention, he's going to get our attention. Well, the wind didn't get Jonah's attention, and the waves didn't get Jonah's attention. But somebody got Jonah's attention. We see it here in verse number 6. It says the shipmaster came down to him, and he said, What are you doing? What are you doing, sleeper? Get up. Arise. Get up and call upon your God so that maybe God will think about us and we perish not. So here we see kind of the first bit of interaction that the Bible records between Jonah and the mariners. Uh, Obviously, he had paid them. They'd spoken. Uh, But here we see them coming down in the ship. The actual ship master comes down to him, wakes him up. Get up. What are you doing? Why are you asleep? Call upon your God. Call upon your God. We think of this, um, sometimes God will send circumstances into our life and it it doesn't affect us. You know, we know that God has something for us to do, but we've got our own plans. You know, we've got our own things going. We've got our own ideas about how to serve God. We've got, you know, we're busy. We've got all this stuff going in our life. Maybe uh, sometimes the ship of our life is being rocked to and fro, but we're just sleeping through the storm, pretending that everything's okay, ignoring the call of God on our life, ignoring the danger that we're causing to other people. And we'll look a bit at that in a minute. But sometimes God will have to send somebody else to shake us out of our uh, complacency, to wake us up, to make us realize that the time has come for us to cry out to our God. And you know, you can't, you can't outrun God. You can't hide from God. You can't deny the fault that's in us. You know, when, when God finally got a hold of Jonah, and we're going to begin to see here as we go along, you can't outrun God, and you can't hide from God. If we look here in the very next verse, in verse 7, these mariners, they all got together and they decided this is somebody's fault. This is not a normal storm. God is doing this. We need to figure out who, who is doing this. So it says they cast lots so that they could know who, for whose cause this evil is upon them. And they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. I was thinking of that lot falling on Jonah. Have you ever got to the point where it just became abundantly clear that you were in the wrong? Where it became just impossible to pretend any longer? I am, everything's, I'm, I'm good, this is, this is just a storm, you guys do your job, get me to Tarshish and, and all this will be okay. You know, we, we sit in our lives and we wonder why God is... Uh, why these things are going on. And sometimes we need a wake-up call. Sometimes we need somebody to put the finger on us and say, you know what, all this that is going on, it's your fault. The storms that are in your life, a lot of times they're there because you're not where you need to be. We put ourselves in these positions. If Jonah had gone to Nineveh, he wouldn't even be in a boat. He wouldn't be in the water. The ship would not be danger-seeking. That lot fell upon Jonah. And I think that instant that the lot fell on Jonah, something clicked inside of Jonah. And we begin to see a change in Jonah's attitude towards God. I think that we need to have a change of attitude towards God. I think for too long we have gone about as if God is our bank, or God is just uh, like a, a, a genie in a bottle that we can pull out when we're in trouble and, and pray to and ask for this or that and then get upset when it doesn't happen. 
But this was a real moment of turning for Jonah. It was that lot falls on Jonah, and he begins to, it sinks in. What have I done? And then he's called upon to make a declaration back to God. You see, we need to not deny God in our lives. Don't deny God. Is he your God? Is he your Lord? Is he your king? What is God to you? We say that we are his children. We say that we worship God, that we love God. Is he our God? He's our king. To quote a line from uh, one of my movies, you may recognize it or not, I won't tell you what it is, but you don't vote for kings. We don't get to decide how we serve our God. And when it comes down to it, when we get to that place where we can no longer deny that we are outside of God's will, when we can no longer deny it, and we're called upon to make a declaration, and they ask him, who are you? Where are you from? And he says unto them this in verse number 9. He says, I am in Hebrew. I am one of this nation that worships Jehovah God. He tells them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. You see that? I fear the Lord. Man, the moment that lot falls on him, it clicks into Jonah. And he's drawn back into himself. He's drawn back into the role of prophet of God. He's no longer someone running and hiding and sleeping away, sleeping through his storm, but he's come back to this point where he makes this declaration of the lordship of God, of the power of his God. I am a Hebrew. You know, when we get to that place in our lives, maybe we stop and we say, you know what, I am a child of God. He is my Lord. He is my king. And he is over all of this. It tells us here that the men were exceedingly afraid and asked him why he had done this to them they ask him in verse 11 what can we do that the sea would become calm unto us because the sea was tempestuous so I want to look at here three things that we're going to see in Jonah and then we're going to look at the change in the mariners okay And these are important steps that we're going to see in Jonah, and they're important steps for you and I when we find ourselves in these situations, because the truth is we find ourselves in these situations. And the first thing we see that Jonah does here is he accepts responsibility for his own sin. We see this here. He says, he said unto them in verse number 12, take me up and cast me forth into the sea so the sea shall be calm unto you for I know that for my sake this great tempest has come upon you what a statement I know that for my sake this great tempest has come upon you when I refuse to serve God the decisions I make don't only affect me they affect those around me They affect the people that are around me. They affect people that believe in God. They affect those that don't know God. God has a work for you to do. He has a work for me to do. God has chosen us. He has saved us. He has adopted us into our family. He has called us as his children to serve him, to obey him. And when we deny him, when we deny him, evil great tempest can come upon the ones that are around about us and at this moment we see he declares the lordship of God over his life and he accepts the responsibility for the storm do you accept the responsibility for the storms that are in your life 
when the storm, as a, as a tr Christian, as a child of God, as we're going through these storms, and, and we will go through storms, and we're being buffeted about, and, and, and it seems like there's no control, do we want to blame everyone else around us and say, well, it's, it's their fault, it's my pastor's fault, it's the church's fault, it's my brother's fault, it's my wife's fault. Do we want to shift the blame to everyone. Or, and we really have to get to this point that Jonah got to, where he accepted the responsibility for his own actions. I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. And even though he tells them this, we see something about the, 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 the conscience of these mariners that says they rowed hard. Nevertheless, they continued to row, trying to bring that ship to land. You know what? They couldn't. The sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. The very sea was working against them. And here Jonah had accepted responsibility. It is my fault for what happened. And it, he doesn't only accept responsibility for the storm, but he accepts the penalty for his actions. A lot of people say, you know, you do the crime, you do the time. And that can be a true statement. But Jonah here not only accepts the responsibility for his sin on them, but he accepts the chastisement. He tells them, you want the storm to cease, he says, throw me into the sea, and the sea will cease her raging. And we see that they did exactly that. In verse 15, they took up Jonah and they cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Jonah here doesn't know about the great fish. Think about this for a minute. Jonah doesn't know that God has already prepared a fish. God, Jonah doesn't know that God is going to save him. Jonah doesn't know that he is going to end up back on dry land. All Jonah knows at this point is, this is my fault because of my sin. And it's my duty to make it right. And he accepts the chastisement of God on his life. He is thrown forth into the sea. Now you have little enough control over the sea on the boat, but at least on the boat you can breathe and you can do something. But the idea of being cast forth into the sea, do you understand that it is placing himself completely and totally on the mercy of God? There is nothing in that sea that Jonah can do. He can't swim to Tarshish. He can't swim to the land. He's thrown into the sea. But it says immediately the sea ceased from her raging. You know, sometimes we can accept the responsibility, I messed up. But a harder thing is accepting the chastisement of the Lord. Accepting the responsibility and accepting the fact that there is a consequence for my actions. And Jonah here accepts this consequence. Now, it'd be one thing if Jonah had looked overboard and saw this fish and he said, oh, God's got this fish. He's got this submarine all prepared for me. Throw me over, everything's fine, I'll be okay. It's gonna take me back. He didn't know any of that. Jonah at this point fully expected to die. Fully accepted to die. And he expected it. He's going to go into the water. He's going to drown. This is going to be over. It's going to be out of my hands. But we know that's not what happened. Now I want to take for a minute. We've seen kind of this change begin in Jonah. And we'll, as we go on into the next study, we'll see more of this in Jonah's uh, heart and life, this change. But we see how Jonah has gone from actively disobeying from sleeping through the storm to admitting who he was. 
to claiming the Lordship of God, and we saw him accept responsibility for his own sin, and now we've seen him accept the punishment for that sin. So we've seen a, a progression in Jonah's heart and life. And I want to look at the journey of these mariners, the journey of these mariners. You see, they begin by crying out everyone to his own God, plurality of gods, everyone crying out to his own God. This is the beginning of it. But we see something begin to react in them at every step, at every step. Every step that Jonah makes towards God, he brings these mariners on a journey closer to God. And I think this is important for us to understand. When Jonah says, I am a Hebrew, I fear the Lord, the one who made the sea and the dry land. It says this, it says the men were exceedingly afraid. They said, why has thou done this? Why? Because they knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord. When he makes claim to God, when he admits to them that he is fleeing from his God, that his God is the one that is bringing these on. When the Lord God Jehovah, the God who created the heavens and the earth, when, when he admits to them who he is a servant of, it brings fear on them. Think about that in, in your life. If you, when, when you stand up and make a declaration, I am a child of God. I fear the Lord. I fear him. And not only do I fear him, I fear him for good reason because he is the creator of everything. When, when you stand up at that moment and you claim God as your own, it does something in the people that are around about you. Just that declaration, just that declaration brought about, began a change in the hearts of these mariners. And we see this. We go on to the next verse. <clears throat> when Jonah tells them, it, this is my fault. I am responsible for the tempest that's going on around here when he accepts that responsibility you know what they cried unto the Lord and it says now look at here remember back in verse number five every one of them cried unto his own God but now here we see they cried unto the Lord unto Jehovah God unto Yahweh they cried out not to their own gods but now they cried out to Jonah's God to the God of Israel, to the God who made the earth and the sea. They have gone in just a few short verses from, from a plurality of gods to crying out to the one true God. And they did this. This happened because of the testimony, because of the repentance of Jonah has caused this change in the hearts of the mariners. Now, Jonah is thrown into the sea. The men on that boat, they're not expecting a fish. They're not expecting to see him. In fact, they have said, Lord, don't hold this innocent man's blood on our hands. But they throw him into the sea. They cast him into the sea. And the sea becomes calm. Their ship is saved. Their lives are saved. They will make it to their desired haven. They're going to make it to port now. <clears throat> and they don't go back, everyone, now to worshiping their own gods. But it tells us something here. It says, the men feared the Lord exceedingly. And not only did they fear him. See, they've gone from fearing the ocean They've gone from fearing their circumstance. They've gone from fearing the, 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 the blind forces that are around them to fearing God himself. 
And not only did they fear him, but they worshiped him. It goes on, it says, they offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. They offered a sacrifice, not unto their gods, but unto Jonah's God, unto Yahweh. They, they began to worship him. As we begin to stand up, accept responsibility for the things that God has given us, when we declare his lordship over our life, when we accept responsibility for our own sins, when we stand up like men of God and we accept the chastisement that God places on us, the world around us will take note. The world around us will take note. When we begin to follow God, the lives of the people around us will be spared. We look around at our nation today and the situation it's in, our world, all the things that are going on. We see the chaos. We see broken homes. We see broken families. We see sub people suffering and addiction all around us. We see these storms of life. And you know why the people around us are suffering in these storms? It's because you and I are down below in the calm, <laughs> sleeping through the storm. But when we begin to rise up, when we begin to take stock, when we focus our lives on them, not only then we will begin to see a change in the people around us. Not just in them, but the first change is going to be is in the circumstances around them. Just imagine if we would get up and begin to serve God as he has called us to do, that a lot of the storms that are in battling the people that are around about us, that those storms would cease. The sea would cease to rage for them. And then as we accept, you know what, I messed up. And we take responsibility for our actions and our sins. And we confess to the people that are around about us, you know what, it's my fault that you're in the shape you're in because I'm not doing what God would have me to do. The change can be palpable in them. They first we see they feared him. Then it says they offered a sacrifice unto him. And then the last thing, it says they made vows. They vowed to serve him. What a powerful statement. This interaction between Jonah and the mariners. We are responsible a lot of times for the storms that our friends and neighbors and families are going through. A lot of times, even though we're sleeping comfortable, the people around us are battling the storms on our behalf. And we need to wake up. We need to rise up. We need to confess. And when we do that, we will begin to see how that God will make a difference in those around us. They began to fear the Lord. They began to offer sacrifices. They be made vows, commitments, surrender to the Lord to serve Him. So we're going to end right there. Next time we're going to look at Jonah and his next in his next phase he's gone from Israel he's been on the boat we're going to leave Jonah floating in the ocean and next time we'll pick up where we left off thank you so much for your kind attention I hope you're enjoying these videos if you are enjoying it please remember to hit the like button and and su subscribe to the channel so that you can get uh, um, so that you can be advised when we put up new videos but if you like it, leave a comment. Let me know that you're watching. If you leave a comment, those things help these videos be available to more people and this content to be available to more people. Thank you so much, and God bless.